Dear colleagues, here are the four basic building blocks. The terminal ductal alveolar unit, number one. The ducts and their branches, number two. And they are supported by this yellow fibrosis or by this white adipose tissue. So we have actually four basic building blocks. This is the main message of my lecture, dear colleagues. Location, location, location. When you see a mammogram and you find a cluster of calcification and another cluster and another cluster calcification and you do core biopsy and your pathology says DCIS, that pathologist is wrong because this is a lobule and this is a lobule and this is a lobule. My warning signal is be very careful with the use of word ductal. These are localized within the terminal ductal lobular unit. Otherwise they would be long. So then the next question you clarify are these oyster-like calcifications? There are only two options here for differential diagnosis. 50% chance sclerosing adenosis with the oyster pearl like calcifications and 50% chance of grade 1 in cytocarcinoma within the TDLU. But what if we were finding this disease? Are these calcifications within a duct? Yes. This woman was 29 years old and never turned 31. That snake killed her. This was a ductal adenocarcinoma of the breast. This is acinar adenocarcinoma of the breast. Likewise, you find these calcifications that are localized within the terminal ductal lobular units. However, the calcifications are discernible, varying in size and density, call them Carston-like calcifications or pleomorphic calcifications. There are three benign processes that are competing in the order of frequency fibrocystic change, fibroadenoma, and papilloma. Alternatively, grade 2 in a situ carcinoma within the TDLU, not DCIS. And what is the location here? Look how simple it is. We perfected imaging to the point that we can really relate to 3D histology and we can relate to long-term outcome. So I would very much like to convince the medical community to leave behind the Babel's Tower, the large number of unreliable biomarkers, and I'm very happy to tell you that the WHO shows great interest for this, and you are going to hear about this quite soon. AAB and DAB. Here it is then. Let's practice for a second. The small little TDLU lives its normal life, but for whatever reason, the accumulation of the cancer cells take place. The intraluminal pressure increases, there is necrosis, there is calcium, so we still talk about four or five millimeter lesion full of calcifications. That's why we need stereotactic biopsy. If you really want to see it in, let's say, real time, the normal little TDLU lives its life up and down, proliferation, involution. For whatever reason, now there are cancer cells, there is necrosis, and within that there are the calcifications. Here is the two-dimensional histology. And we radiologists put an x-ray tube above it and image it. What do you think the image is going to look like? Cluster, multiple cluster, discernible calcifications. And here is the animation. Dear colleagues, this is not ductal carcinoma in situ. Indeed, it is a professional mistake to mislead another colleague by calling it a duct. So there are two options only for malignant lesions to develop within the TDLU and calcify. The powdery cotton ball like grade one and the crushed stone like the grade two in situ, right in front of you. During the decades we learned this mammographic histologic correlation first 
we should look at the structure, the three-dimensional, and then we talk about the cells. Hopping over the structure leaves a lot of problem behind. Practical example, you find this, you put the core biopsy into it, you get the diagnosis DCIs. It's not. Here is the conventional histology, and dear colleagues, here are the TDLUs full of, full of carcinoma. AAB, grade one, not DCIS. Practical example, you have this de novo little cluster calcification, a group of calcifications. The calcifications would look like this if they were within a duct. And then you do magnification and then you now you look at the shape and the density and the size of the calcifications, how close they are to each other, and then you say, I don't think about fibrocystic change, fibrinoma papilloma. I think this is going to be a grade two insight within the TDLU. And then hand-eye coordination. Every pathologist in the world would say grade two DCIS. And when you go to the tumor board, I'd like to warn you that you not even see this magnification. You see this humongous magnification, that is, they are only showing you a part of this asinus. This is not a duct. This is an asinus, enormously distended. So could you just ask the colleagues, the pathologists, would you mind showing me very low magnification? Then it immediately becomes obvious that this is actually a terminal ductal lobular unit and not a ductal carcinoma. So when you go to Google and you look at the um, American Cancer Society's definition what DCIS is and they say that it's confined to the milk ducts, that's when I stop and say you are wrong. Dear colleagues, why do I say that 75 percent of the cancers originate from the TDLU? Because 50 percent of the cancers in their early phase look like this, in situ, crushed stone like let's say 25% grade 1 and fortunately only 25% originate from the major ducts which makes breast cancer a good disease and if it's 90% that originate from the acini in the prostate prostate cancer is a good disease compared to lung cancer compared to brain tumor compared to pancreatic cancer and when the cancer originates in the duct there are four different subtypes in two. There is necrosis and there is no fluid production. In two of the subtypes, there is fluid production and there is no necrosis. The outcome is somewhat different. So, dear colleagues, we are talking about a revolution. That the first breast cancer was published about 5,000 years ago, but up to 1970, physicians didn't have a chance to make a difference in the prostate or a breast cancer outcome. Since 1970, our generation made this revolution and that's because of imaging, not because of chemotherapy, not because of adjunctive tools. We need them because there will always be advanced cancers, unfortunately, but it's early detection and proper treatment. Now, my friends who feel my frustration about the archaic histopathology practiced all over the world because therapists, surgeons changed, oncologists changed, the revolution was caused by the images, pathologists didn't change for 200 years. So I challenge the term DCIS. People in America and Canada are very familiar with Dr. Sue's books. Europeans usually don't. My MR expert friend Steve Harms came to the courses once and he was kind enough to give me a little present about too many days. Have I ever told you that Mrs. McCabe had 23 sons and she named them all Dave? Well, it wasn't a very smart thing to do. Why? Because when she wants to talk with this particular Dave, she doesn't get one, she gets 23 on the run. And that causes a lot of problem at the Mac Caves. And then she says, why didn't I call them A and B and C and D? 
and now it's too late. Why was I happy about this? Because then I thought I'm going to rewrite this book. Have I ever told you that Dr. Briss pathologist had 12 sons? One of them looks like this, no calcium, intracystic papillary carcinoma site. The other one, no calcification but bloody nipple discharge. The third one, architectural distortion. The fourth one, some calcium. This one again, architectural distortion. Are they very different? Yes. This calcium is different from the, and that calcium, and so on. Dear colleagues, who finds in cytocarcinoma? You and I, the radiologists. And we have at least 12 different mammographic appearance of a disease, but all of them get one name. DCIS. And that wasn't a smart thing to do. Why? Because when Dr. Breast Pathology says DCIS come to the tumor board, he or she doesn't get one. She gets 12 on the run. And that causes a lot of problem. So why didn't I call it grade one in situ within the TDLU? Easy to understand. Grade 2 within the TDLU. Grade 3 within the duct. Intracystic papillary in situ. And don't tell it's too late. Please change it. What's your suggestion? My suggestion is that I want to respect the pathologists, but they have to grow into the 21st century. Only you can tell the grade. Tell me. Grade 1, I love it. Tell grade 2, love it. Only you can say it's in situ. But why don't you tell a location? The only thing I beg, forget about the letter D. The pathology says grade 1 in situ within the TDLU. The radiologist's mind immediately focuses on this picture. Grade 2 in situ within the TDLU, that's it. Grade 3 within the ducts, then it has to be long. Now we talk with each other. Otherwise, DCIS is an outdated term in the era of modern imaging and histologic techniques. I hope that you're going to remember this very harsh statement. Whenever after this lecture, you are going to utter the word DCIS, feel bad. Because you don't know what you are talking about and you're not communicating with others. You say, all boys are good, but what about that specific boy? That's where we are today.